Hi, I'm Troy McMullen. I uh, study lichens here at the museum. Um, and uh, my research program is focused all over North America, but one of my main focuses is in the Arctic. Um, but before moving ahead, I think we should all be on the same page about what a lichen is. Uh, a lichen is really a fungus uh, that's discovered agriculture. It's learned how to farm. Um, it, uh, it works together with an algae or a cyanobacterium, and when the two come together, they transform into something completely unique, and we recognize it as a species. Lichens can be really small, and they can be really large. Small, like this one beside the quarter here, and large, like this mat that I'm lying in on the other side. Uh, the ones that grow on the, uh, the, the large side can feed herds of hundreds of thousands of caribou in the winter, winter months when uh, uh, there isn't much else to eat. Um, and they're a lot like coral uh, on the terrestrial, in, in the terrestrial environment in that they're very colorful. They have a lot many different shapes. They're very sensitive and they actually get their nutrients and minerals from the air and from the water that washes over them a lot like coral. Um, uh, so in the Arctic, uh, there's a lot of lichen. However, there hasn't been a lot of collecting. This is a map of the collection density that we know of. So anywhere that you see red, there was 150 species collected, and that's not a whole lot in the Arctic, just showing that there, isn't, there hasn't been a whole lot of collecting done up there. So since I've been at the museum, I've gone up to the Arctic four times. These are the sites that I went to uh, all throughout the Arctic. And I'm focusing specifically on Nunavut right now. And uh, I've gotten to the far corners thus far and will continue to go into the future. Uh, the first trip that I did was in 2016. Uh, a team of us went up from the museum and you can see us in the corner there working with uh, elders where we're learning about traditional uses of lichens and plants. Um, the landscape up there was uh, fairly flat, but it still had lots of interesting species. Here are just six of a large number of species we found that had major disjuncts. So the blue dots are the <clears throat> ones in Arviat, and then the red ones are all the historical ones. So we had like these major, major disjuncts, um, suggesting we really don't really understand the baseline in the Arctic all that well. Um, so when changes come, uh, we won't know if, they, if things have changed. So we had some uh, adventures up there, like these Arctic terns that wouldn't, didn't like us going near their nests that would dive bomb us, and we would um, encounter polar bears almost every single day. So always going up there as an adventure. <clears throat> um, one of the big adventures that we had was uh, Paul Sokoloff and I went up to the high Arctic in two seven, 2017. We went to several islands in the, in the high uh, Arctic. Uh, this is our base camp at one of them. And I showed that rabbit there because you can get really close to some of the animals because they're not, they don't encounter people very often. Some of the adventures that we had up there included creeks that uh, were, w once we crossed them early in the morning, we'd come back at the end of the day and they'd be three times the size or flying in this DC-3. The last one was built in 1946. And when we got to any altitude, oxygen mass would drop down that we had to take on. And once again, we found a lot of major disjuncts like this species here that typically grows in the deserts of the Southwest. Um, and we also got to meet colleagues from around the world, like this camp here where there was about 15 different countries represented. Uh, in 2018, another team of us went up to Baffin Island and we worked, um, uh, we really focused our energies on uh, Sylvia Grinnell Territorial Park, did a complete inventory of it. And as you would, uh, <laughs> as the theme would show, uh, we found a lot of interesting disjuncts like this species as well, uh, is new to Nunavut, new to the Arctic really. Um, and this just shows the kind of collecting that we do. This is uh, two days worth of collecting. Each one of these bags represents a specimen uh, and they're all drying right now. Um, and we found additional uh, disjuncts. These ones aren't as far as some of the other ones we've seen, but they're still new to the Arctic archipelago. Uh, so just the Arctic islands. Um, so we really don't understand the, the baseline of what is there and how can you say things are changing without knowing that baseline. In 2019, the summer just passed, I went up with uh, a team from the University of Guelph to look for lichens around Kugluktuk, uh, focusing on Kugluk Territorial Park. And uh, lo and behold, we found more species that were new to Nunavut, uh, like this species here, uh, which I collected right in the spray zone of the falls at um, Kugluk Falls. Uh, <clears throat> and so this project, um, we went to two sites, we went to Kugluk, and then we went to Cambridge Bay a little further in. And Cambridge Bay was really interesting uh, because the, in, the, the rock type was different. It was very calcareous there, which meant uh, the species were different. So there was a lot of species we saw um, when we worked, we worked in uh, uh, Voyak Territorial Park, and there was a lot of species that we didn't see anywhere else. So this summer's past, we were doing our work through the Arctic Bioscan, 
uh, project, which is trying to generate DNA barcodes for all the species in the Arctic. And I'm leading the lichen portion of that project. It's a, it's a much larger project. Uh, and I thought I'd finish with uh, an interesting species that Paul Sokoloff previously pointed out. This is the first Arctic species that the two of us have, uh, or that anyone has uh, nominated as a species at risk in Canada. It's endemic to Canada, and uh, it's a spectacular one that deserves to be listed. Thank you. Thank you.